came along and it was about a, a charity event in Morocco. Yeah? So initially I'm thinking, I made the intention in January, three more months have gone by, I haven't done anything at all, and I get this WhatsApp message about a charity event. Now I love doing charitable things and exciting things. This was a charity event going to Morocco and climbing the Atlas Mountains and cycling. So anyway, I went along and had an absolutely fabulous time. I was with 50 other brothers. You know, the brotherhood was amazing. You know, we saw amazing scenery. We, you know, we went to the top of a mountain, we hiked, we cycled, it was amazing. But the one thing that I took away from it was the brotherhood. When you get 50 people together, all for a common goal, we were all raising money for charity. We all ate together, we slept together. But the, the, the big, big, big thing I took away was we talked about Islam in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and I learned lots and lots of things that ordinarily I wouldn't have learned in my day-to-day -day life. I wouldn't have learned at mosque because the facility wasn't there for me to do that. Um, so because of my energy and how I am as a person, what happened was we got, I got invited to another charity trek, another event. So I went along and the other event was cycling to Paris, from London to Paris. Again, so I did that trip, and again, it was a fabulous trip. We started off in London, we cycled to Brighton, then across France. The scenery was amazing, we reached the Eiffel Tower, it was absolutely fantastic. The, the, the emotions were brilliant. But again, the best bit for me was the time we spent with some of the brothers. We learned so many stories about the Prophet, peace be upon him, about the Sahabas, things that I can use in daily life. Ordinarily, I don't get that information. You know, I'm born and brought up here in Manchester, in Russia, and I've not got access to them courses. So for me, it was brilliant. I get to, to cycle to another country which is adventurous. It keeps me strong. Build up my iman with the brotherhood. And I made some amazing friends. Being in that environment, I made some amazing friends that I think I'm going to be in touch with forever. And you know, we learn lots of things about, you know, when you have a friend, you want to be friend with somebody who's going to bring you close to the dean, who's going to make you a better person, who's going to up-level you, improve your character and your conduct. So that, that was absolutely fabulous. So out of all the charity events that I've always done, the thing that I've taken away most was being with the people, learning about Islamic values, and I've applied them into my own personal life, and it's been absolutely fabulous. The last couple of years have been brilliant. And that all goes back to intention. I made that intention to do something, and it was in my mind, however, I didn't act upon it. Uh, next slide, please. So, one of the things I'm going to say is, you know, if you've got positive action, you will definitely succeed and you will be happy. But it all has to start on intention. We all know that we will be judged on our intention. So, we're here today with the intention of getting some extra information on the course that we're going to have. You know, you just don't know where you can be in the next two years. Um, so, my, my plea to you will be, You've made the intention to come, get lots and lots of information, share it, because you may inspire somebody else. So not only will you get the reward for being here, making the intention, having some positive action, because you want to be successful and happy. Now, the other point of adding that point of being successful and happy, we can all define success and happiness in lots of different ways. We want a new car, we want a bigger house, we want a brand new sofa, whatever it may be. But ultimately, I firmly believe, and I can guarantee, I can guarantee this, we can't guarantee a lot of things, but if we do have positive action, and by that I mean doing positive things, attending the mosque, having good positive friends, friends that are going to make you a better person, who are going to uplift your being, then ultimately you will be successful and you will be happy in this life and the hereafter. There's not a lot of things, you know, an accountant will tell you we can guarantee taxes and, taxes and death, but I'm going to tell you, if you follow the deed and have very good friends around you, you will be successful and you will be happy. And that is just a bit of an introduction to what the course is about. The course, we're going to have some amazing speakers tell you a lot more in detail, but this is a little bit about myself and how I got into it and how it's helped me just from having the intention and the positive action. So if you still, you know, yeah, there's a lot of hands up there saying I want to be happy and successful. This is an amazing route to almost guarantee that. You're going to have lots of ups and downs, but this will guarantee within yourself you will be a lot more successful and happy and ultimately. This is what we want for this life and the hereafter. I'd like to say thank you very much for uh, coming along and I'm going to pass you over. as alaikum wa rahmatullah. جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خير الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وذرياته وأهل بيته أجمعين. Respected elders, brothers, 
sisters, youngsters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, we praise the Almighty, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Provider of, of each and everything. And as peace, blessings, and salutations upon our final Prophet, our Master, none other than Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and his family and his companions and those who follow him. First and foremost, congratulating our Imam Sahib and those organizers who have put forward this idea of learning Islam. It is a Saturday night and we all know what happens mainly on Saturday night. We are all busy. Some people are indulged in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise be to him that he has given us the ability to come into his house and learn his deed. Brother Jahangir, he just put up one word there and this is what has triggered me to mention what I'm going to mention before you. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala said, Gain knowledge. Min al-mahdi ila al from the cradle to the grave. I can see many elders sitting here, those people that may have that idea that it's only important to learn when you are young. But the Prophet ﷺ has not kept any bounds, neither has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. For us to gain knowledge from the moment we are born till the moment we die. And if we have that mentality that we are going to learn something each and every day, Allah will make it easy for us. Now because it is the start, I will say two, three more things and ask for your leave. And that is intention. Why have you came here? Why have you come here today? What is the purpose of you coming on a Saturday, leaving whatever you are going to do and gain knowledge? What is the purpose? Is it so that someone calls you a learning person? Is it so that you've got a title? Is it so that you can go around correcting other people? What is the intention of us learning? This is the first and foremost thing. The first hadith of Bukhari Sharif, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ That your actions are based upon your intentions. And as today being the introductory session, let us make our intentions correct and firm. <coughs> Why do we want to gain this knowledge? And the intention should be, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbul Alameen, I want to study your deen. First and foremost, to correct myself. Self-rectification and self-purification. So that I become in that, that stage and I become from those people that you are pleased with. I become from those people that have gained your pleasure. I want to study your deen. So I know I am worshipping you correctly. I know that I am fulfilling the commands you have set out correctly. I am studying so I know what your beloved Messenger وسلم, who you sent to us as a guide, what was his message that he delivered? That is the first and primary goal and that should be our intention. I pray to Allah Rabbul Alameen that he give us the ability to have firm intentions so that we study solely for him. And he make it easy for us that we embark on this journey of knowledge so that we gain closer, closeness to him and we become from those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will reward them and he is pleased with them and grants them his jannah and grants the salvation from his halfire. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah wa kafa. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhi nasqafa. Khususun ala sayyidina wa sanadina wa maulana muhammadini nasqafa. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amma ba'd. Qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Majid. Wa al-Furqan al-Hamid. Ba'da naqul a'udhu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر الباب صدق الله العظيم. The respected audience have been asked to say a few words, and no doubt there are many many people in front of you who are more worthy than speaking. 
However, I want to mention three things today to wake us up to the reality of the times we are living in. You see, when we look in the Quran, there is a journey that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us on. You have to imagine when the Quran was revealed. A lot of us we are reading the Quran without understanding the context. Imagine going back 1,400 years in the time of darkness, of ignorance, where people are gambling away their money, fornicating, burying their daughters alive, worshipping idols made out of stones and dates and what have you. In these dark, dark times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to send a revelation to the best of creation. But what's, what's very important, the same way when I come on this mic, my initial words will give you a first impression. The way I pose myself and compose myself in front of you, you will get an idea as to who is this person and how is he speaking about and his background. So it's very important that we look in the Quran to the initial opening words, the first impression that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these dark times of shirk and dhulm is taking place, how does he introduce himself? How does he address the issue in the Quran? Does he order us initially to begin praying to him alone with tawheed? Does he order us to abandon shirk and to abandon the sins that the people were doing at the time? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initiates the Quran with the verses Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq That read in the name of your Lord who created you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces to the world the Quran, the Holy Quran, by inviting you, rather ordering us to read. This religion is a religion of one, of intelligence, of reading. If you look throughout the entire Quran, you will see constantly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling out to our intellects. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do you not think, do you not ponder? Does that intelligence not receive? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting you to something. And this is before He invites us to Tawheed. He invites us to learn. Through learning we can recognize Tawheed, we can recognize Allah. There is one point, it says here, the problem. The problem we are living in, in this day and age, is a lack of knowledge. And there's one point that I want to mention that will make us feel ashamed of where we are today, but also encourage us. When we look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the kuffar of Mecca. The kuffar at that time, who had tortured and punished the Muslims and caused so much harm and grief to our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When describing those damned and condemned people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, الَّذِينَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمُ That even these condemned people, these cursed mal'oon people, they recognized and they knew our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like they knew their own children. In comparison to those mal'oon people, us, his lovers, his followers, his believers, ask yourself this question. Do I know him like I know my own children? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do I know him even anything like my own child? The same way if I was to ask you in your child's absence, what is your child's hair like? What is your child's character like? How does he walk? How does he talk? What does he like to eat? Where does he go? What does he do? Who is he? All of these questions without a doubt, without a delay, immediately will tell me the answer straight away. الَّذِينَ يَعْرِفُونَ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاهُمْ They recognize the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in a way that we haven't. أَمْنَمْ يَعْرِفُوا رَسُولَهُمْ We do not recognize the ability of Muhammad ﷺ. And so the problem we are living in today is with the millions and millions of attacks we have on Islam and you just turn the news and you will see. You will see what's happening in China. You will see what's happening around the world. People are attacking Islam from above, from below, from the left, from the right, from in front. Attacking goes constantly from every single aspect. It takes you, you know, two minutes, go online and see the theological, the philosophical, the political, in every single aspect they are attacking our religion. They were saying things about our beloved Muhammad sallallahu and we know no better. If a person was to come to you and say that you are prophet of Islam, he did such and such a thing, do you know well enough to answer this question? This is the question, this is the question I want you to ask yourself. This is the problem. The problem, we are living in dark times and we are asking it upon ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us like this. 
With ignorance comes test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the Quran that وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ That surely we will test you in many many ways. أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ عَبَدْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran that the people who say they believe do they really think I will leave them without testing them? And so in these troubling times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us and he is testing us with a lack of knowledge. So the question arises, what is the solution? The solution is as our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says in a hadith, he says, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمُ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَفِي لِوَايَةٍ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمَةٍ He says the seeking of knowledge, to go out and actively seek knowledge is an obligation upon every single Muslim. Every single Muslim. The same way you take care of your salah because it is a farm. Ask yourself, do I take the same care and initiative in regards to my knowledge? Nowadays you go online, you go on the YouTube, you go on Google, and there's so much information available. But you take it without a question, without questioning its authenticity. Like that you will not go to any random masjid and pray salah behind a man you don't know. Rather, because you know it's your fault, your obligation, you take that initiative to find out something about him, to give him salam and see his akhlaq, to observe his physical character, and then you are comfortable with praying behind him. Then you pray him and obligate, you fulfill your obligation behind him. Likewise, when you go online and you research and you study online, or whatever you may receive knowledge from, what investigation did you do? Compare this obligation of talabul ilm, of seeking knowledge to your prayer, and you will find we are all lacking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And the solution is to actively seek knowledge. And we can talk for hours and hours. In fact, you go online and you research this yourself. What are the virtues that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us about seeking knowledge? And what you will find, subhanAllah, it is no more than an honor to consider yourself somebody who studied knowledge. That when you receive one thing about this deen, one mas'ala, the Prophet sallallahu tells us in, the, in a hadith, that to learn one mas'ala of deen is better than praying a thousand rak'at. A thousand rak'at. Imagine the time it can take you to pray one thousand rak'at with sincere devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is telling us to learn one ayah from the Quran or one thing from this deen is better than this. In the hadith, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Inna al ulama warathatul anbiya. He says, Those people of knowledge, those people who hold knowledge, they are the inheritors of the prophets. Alayhi wa sallam but what did they inherit from him? وَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُوا دِينَارًا وَلَا دِرْهَمًا وَلَاكِنْ وَرَّفُوا الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ أَفَضَهُ أَفَضَ بِحَظِّ الْوَافِرِ Rather, what they leave behind in inheritance is not pounds and pennies, dinar nor dirham. They leave behind knowledge. And a person who takes from this has taken an abundant taking. So question yourself, in my relation to my beloved Muhammad sallallahu have I inherited anything from him from this knowledge? In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and this is the last hadith, he says, فَضُّ الْعَالِمْ عَلَى الْعَابِدْ كَفَضِّ الْقَمَرْ عَلَى سَائِرِ النُّجُومِ لَيْلَةَ بَدْرِهَا He says the virtue of an alim, a person who has studied or learned something of this deen, in comparison to what we call an abid, a person who worships Allah with devotion day and night. Can you imagine? He says, it's like the full moon in comparison to the stars. This is the alim. The ulama, they say part jokingly, that the alim, after he studies the deen intensively, whilst he is sleeping, whilst he is sleeping and dreaming, and God knows what he is doing in your sleep, a person is worshipping Allah the entire night. The sleep of the alim is better than the worship of the alim. Because the effort he took to seek knowledge. Without knowledge, we have no faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, that those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given ilm to, Allah will raise them in ranks. And when you come to study the Arabic language, he did not say ad-darajat. He said darajatin. In a nakira form, many, many ranks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise this person in. And so likewise, we must take it upon ourselves to learn, to seek knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rahman, That from which of the favors of your Lord will you deny when we are raised on your own And Allah questions us for our ignorance. 
And Allah questions us why we do not know what we are supposed to know. You cannot deny it. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the a'la. He gave us the favors, He gave us the truth. Masjids, masajid, madaris, colleges, universities are offering knowledge. And yet we are sat within our homes, becoming more and more ignorant by the day, questioning ourselves, why is the world the way it is today? So our message to all of you in this short speed, I've taken too much time, is to ponder upon yourself and ask yourself, what do I know of this deen? And let yourself be humble in the sight of Allah. مَنْ تَوَاضَ عَلِ اللَّهِ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Whoever humbles himself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will raise him. Point number one, humble yourself before Allah and realize, I do not know what I need to know. Point number two, realize the solution is there. You cannot deny the solution. You cannot say to Allah that, oh Allah, you know, if you go back 50 years in our back home in Pakistan and Bangladesh, if you go back, there were no ulama left, right and center. But in this day and age, within one room, you have so many prominent scholars in front of you. You cannot say, I did not have the means or opportunity. So the solution is there. And the reward you will get is beyond anything I can say here today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to act upon what we have heard and grant us the understanding of deen. And the last thing I want to mention, as this is the induction day, many people will arrive for the induction, but come less and less and they are not here. You see, the biggest miracle of any waliullah, any saint of Allah, any pious man, was he had something known as istiqama. And istiqama is steadfastness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people he mentioned, in the ladina qalu rabbuna allahu thumma istiqamu, that those people who have istiqama to fundi at the time of Maud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send angels upon them. And from amongst them, Jibreel. And they will give him the glad tidings. Abshiru bil jannah. La takhafu wa la tahzalu. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Glad tidings of jannah for you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people. Ameen wa ahmu da'wana wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Mention the structure of the course we'll be doing, inshallah. Before I go to the, our chief guest and the main speaker of today, will be enlightening us with some other words, inshallah. I'd like to give an idea of the structure of the course that we are planning to do, inshallah. This is the first time in our masjid, and uh, I hope that will be helping us and we'll be getting benefited, the community will be benefited by the course, inshallah. So, before that, I would like to mention a very brief hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that one day Sayyidina Umar Faruq radiallahu alayhi wa mentioned the hadith that one day while we are sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a very handsome alayhi wa sallam in this beautiful hadith. We need to enroll ourselves and need to sit with the teacher and to find out these three questions. And this is what we'll be you know, trying to teach our community, our brothers and sisters, that through this course, inshallah. Now, the structure of the course, to find out this three answer of these three questions, we need to go to a structure. And it will involve the first and foremost knowledge from the Quran. The knowledge from the Quran, the knowledge of the Quran, the Ilm Quran. In the knowledge of the Quran, we you know, learn about the uh, we analyze this kind of con contemplation of the beautiful meaning of significant verses in the Holy Quran, broaden our knowledge of the language and discourse used in the Quran, be able to comprehend and implement stories and teachings from the Holy Quran, be able to understand the Islamic laws and morals from the Quran. So this is what we look at when we teach or learn any studies you know, from the Holy Quran. Now, for this, what we have chosen is we have chosen the IGCS in Islamia under Cambridge University. So we will uh, uh, choose the selected version from the Quran, from their syllabus, and we'll be teaching to our people, inshallah, to uh, get the knowledge from the Quran through these selected verses. The second main primary source of our religion is Al Hadith. What is Hadith? The sayings, the action, and the approval of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah The sayings and actions of the companions. So, what we'll be doing in this course, we'll be explore, exploring selected Hadith of the Prophet We'll be able to memorize some of the Hadith along with their meanings. We'll analyze in depth the context and interpretation of the Hadith whilst also taking lessons from them to implement into our life. Again, the primary text we'll be using is from the Hadith al-Arba'un, from Imam al-Nawawi, the famous 
hadith book, the 14 hadith of Imam Nawawi, to start with this course, inshallah. Now, the second, third, you know, a very important subject in our deen is fiqh. What is fiqh? The fiqh is the study of Islamic laws and jurisprudence. What is halal? What is haram? What is mubah? What is makro? These are things that we need to know in our life to lead, lead our life in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, it teaches us what is moral and what is immoral, what is permissible, what is impermissible. So, we'll be using the prime, as a primary text the Tasheerul Fiqh book. Five and six, and uh, uh, of the of the book we'll be teaching, inshallah, and we'll be learning, you know, from our salah to fasting to hajj to zakat, the main important thing of our deen in this under this context. Then we'll be teaching aqidah. What is aqidah? Now, aqidah learn the correct Islamic beliefs and correct creed of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Sunni Islam, to strengthen our iman to gain essential knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about Islam, about listing what a Muslim must know and inwardly believe to essentially be a Muslim. So all the correct belief, what, how, what to believe about Allah, what to believe about the prophets, about the angels, about the day of judgment, about you know uh, the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is come under the Aqeedah we'll be talking about inshallah. As a primary text we'll be using Aqeedah Tahawiyah, uh, actually, we'll be uh, using a Tasheer al part 6 and 7 for this context, which is very easy to understand for the beginners, inshallah. You know, we'll be adding more books of Aqeedah in uh, advanced level. Then we'll be learning Seerah. What is Seerah? Seerah, as our previous uh, brothers mentioned beautifully, about the life of the Prophet We have to learn about, you know, we have to learn about him. As, uh, as he mentioned, that even the non believers, the Ahlul Kitab, Yehudi, and Christians, the Jews and Christians, they know about the Prophet more than, the, more than they know about the children. Do we know the Prophet more than our children? We don't know how he ate, how he lived, how he talked, how he, you know. So we need to know about his seerah, about his biography, and it is one of the essential part of being Muslim. To know about the Prophet You know, you'll see him in grave. Will you be able to recognize him? You do not know anything about him. How his beard was, how his face was, how his eyebrow was. So these are the things we'll be learning in under Sira, his life story, his biography, his physical appearance. We need to know that, otherwise we'll not be able to recognize him in grave, we'll not be able to recognize him on the day of judgment. So this is the you know one of the very important aspect of our religion, the seerah of the Prophet wasallam. Then also we'll be learning the spirituality. You know, if you remember the uh, question of Jibreel alayhi the third question was, what is Ihsan? Mal Ihsan, what is Ihsan? And the Ihsan is what we know about in, in uh, spirituality. You know, Tazki or Tasawwuf, whatever name we gave it, is this is the meaning of Ihsan, this is the knowledge of Ihsan. Now for each and every act of worship we do, it has two sides. One is outer side, one is inner side. Outer side is known as Il Mulfit, that we mentioned before, Halal, Haram. And another is inner side of every aspect of our Ibadah, of our worship, this is known as spirituality. This is what we need to learn, our manner, our behavior, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with fellow believers. And this is what we study under spirituality. So this is the, you know, uh, the main subjects we will be studying uh, in our in our course. So before I go to a uh, class format, I would like to call upon our guest speaker, the uh, main guest of our today, uh, Maulana Hafiz Muhammad Hussain, uh, under, his, uh, under the guidance of his father, Khalid Tayyip Sahib, Ta'ala. Then he studied in, 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 in Egypt, also in Yemen, and uh, currently he is the Imam of and Khatib of Kuba Masjid in Stockport, also he is the in a, a Ustad and teacher at Jami Rasulia in uh, Wally Ridge. So without further ado, I'd like to call upon Hafiz Maulana Muhammad Uzay to enlighten us with his awesome wisdom, inshallah. And then we'll, you know, mentioning the more about the structure of our class. Those that have taken on this intention to study the course 
I first start by congratulating you. You've been selected by Allah in a way, in a manner that you could never comprehend. And the teachers themselves have been selected by Allah to deliver this knowledge because this is sacred knowledge. Everything relating to the deen, when being taught, when being delivered, the mere mentioning of the deen becomes sacred in itself. And the time that we spend here, as Hafiz Fahim mentioned before, for you to sleep upon one mas'ala that you've learned is better than performing a thousand nawafil throughout the night. This is the virtue of the reward you will gain for attending the course once a week. So at least that Sunday night that you spend, that night is spent in more virtue than performing a thousand nawafil throughout the entire night. That's the reward you're up for. That's what's on sale. You come for two hours, you get the reward of performing a thousand nawafil which can take up to 12, 15 hours. You get that in two hours, in if not more. The Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi Abu Huraira radiallahu once he went to the market and he saw people, they were busy in business. Somebody's buying groceries, somebody's buying clothes, somebody's selling, they're talking to one another in the market, but they're busy. And Abu Huraira comes out from Masjid he has a look around and he's staring at his head. You know, there's, there's so much more that these guys could do. So he went to the middle of the market and started making a claim and he made a da'wah. Look, the inheritance of the Prophet وسلم, is being distributed and you guys are busy in the market. What are you doing? Go on to the masjid and take from the inheritance of the Prophet وسلم. So when people thought materialistically for a moment, that maybe there's some wealth, some gold, some silver, the Prophet peace upon him. That that's being divided, distributed between the people. So the people, they dropped everything and they ran to the masjid. They came to the masjid, entered Masjid Nabi. And they see a group of Sahabai Kiram and some Tabi'een. They sat in one corner and they're discussing matters of fiqh. The people quite shocked. Well, where's the gold and where's the silver? I thought there'd be goods are going to be distributed because that's what inheritance is, isn't it? A person, he passes away when he leaves behind his bank balance, his properties, his cars. That's probably what they were expecting in the masjid. But they didn't see any of that. They came back out and they cornered and said, Abu Hurairah and asked him, Ya, are you wasting our time? Are you taking the mic? We were busy in our business, in our trading, and you disturbed all of us. You disrupted what we were doing just to go see in the masjid a few guys sat down, Sahaba Kiram, and they discussed the matter of fiqh. He said, That's exactly what I wanted to teach you. What they were discussing and what they were teaching, that ta'aleem and ta'allum that was taking place, that is the true inheritance of the Prophet. Not the gold and silver, what we have imagined. And what will be distributed here over the next two years is the direct inheritance of Rasulullah That's why it becomes sacred. And when it becomes sacred, like Imam Sa'ad mentioned, Imam Khair Huda, he's my senior, he's more learned than me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect him, preserve him, give him barakah in his time and in his works. He was mentioning there's two elements of the deen. There's a zahir and there's a batin. Everything you do has, a, has, a, has an outward uh, performance, an outward appearance to it, but at the same time it has a deep inner reality as well, an inner experience. That's where you tap into the realm of spirituality. Everything you do is directly affecting your spiritual state. So when you attend a course or when you join a course, how is your spirituality being affected? How are you spiritually uh, arising? Or how is it benefiting you? How can you maximize your output in spirituality and seeking knowledge? Because knowledge, like Imam uh, uh, Hafiz Fahimsa mentioned, you search on Google. 
You know all the content that's going to be told here? You can probably get all of that on Google already. You can't. You want to learn the rules of fiqh, the rules of salah, rules of zakah, ask Sheikh Google. I'm telling you, he's a genius, he knows everything. You just walk in, he didn't even tell you all the masail relating to zakah that you have never imagined he'll answer them as well. He's amazing. But there's no spirituality in that. And knowledge has always been taught from heart to heart, from chest to chest. Look from the time of the Sahaba Kiram, the example again, where they were studying, where they sat in the masjid teaching. That was heart to heart. The Tabi'in took directly from the hearts of the Sahaba Kiram. The Atbar Tabi'in took directly from the Tabi'un. The Imam Mushtahideen, the likes of Imam Malik, Imam Abu Halifa, who took directly from the Sahaba Kiram. It was heart to heart. It wasn't behind a virtual screen. Because that's where spirituality becomes disconnected. Now you're trying to take that knowledge based on your level of spirituality, on your level of understanding. And that's where you will never progress. This is why it's so essential to come and attend, join courses like this. If you are blessed to be here, you are trying to experience that, help others experience it as well. Why be greedy? Why limit it to yourself? If you know in your family you have individuals, you have cousins or you have friends, from school, from college. Invite them, call them in, bring them in. There are so many that do not. You'll be surprised how many don't know that there's a course taking place in Shadila. Why? Because nobody's sharing this information. Share this information with them. So, importance of knowledge, I've mentioned this hadith of Abu Intention. Everything in the Amal bin Niyat, as we know. Niyat al mumini khayr min amal. Your intention is better than your action. You know the difference the hadith says people wake, will wake up, they have mountains and mountains of good deeds. And this person he will ask, Ya Allah, amazing. Whose are these? These mountains and mountains of good deeds? I could have never imagined somebody would have done so many good deeds. Who are they? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still will say, O oh, slave, these are yours. Yeah. Why? Where did it come from? I don't do any such. I'm quite shocked myself. Somebody can have that many rewards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond. It's a result of the intentions you made before those actions that have multituded in the reward. And that's what you were shocked to see today. One deep amal. And when seeking knowledge, those that are taking on this knowledge and are, are on board, or those that you will be speaking to, convincing them to join this course. Intention, number one. What is the intention for our ilm? Why do you want to study? The number one intention, and I always tell these, these students that come through the doors of any madrasa, your number one intention is Allah. That is your intention. If your intention is just to get the, the, uh, uh, the achievement at the end, to get a certificate, Maybe get the credits, the, the credentials of this, this course, then you will achieve, but you will never attain Allah. You've lost that there and then. The number one intention is gain closeness to Allah. Come to know to come to know Allah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, illa But how do you know how to worship? You attend courses like this. This is where they will be teaching you. This is how Allah wants you to worship Him. This is how He wants to be known. The next most important thing, you must have complete trust in your teachers. If you don't have trust in your teachers, how will you ever have complete confidence in what you are studying? It's so important to trust the teachers that you are studying under. Because the current fitna that we have, the, uh, those that don't believe in any mother, don't follow any imams, they call themselves the people of the hadith only, that they can directly go to the works of hadith and take knowledge. The reason they do that is because they don't, don't trust teachers. And because they don't trust teachers, look at the mess that they're in, the chaos that they've fallen into. Between themselves, 
they can never be content over what they are studying and what they are reading. So teachers, you have complete trust in your teachers. And the next one relating to that is respect of teachers is the key to all success. Absolutely essential. If you don't have respect for your teacher in your heart and in your physical uh, display of character, if the respect and honor of the teacher is not there, you will never ever succeed. And this is a piece of advice that's been passed down right from the Salaf, from the times of Imam Malik rahimahullah, up till now, and I'm repeating the same advice to you. Respect of teachers. And not only respect of teachers, respecting all tools of knowledge. The books that you have, the pens that you use, you respect all of them. Why do you respect them? Because this is the source of knowledge. This pen, this print out that you will have, you may think it's only paper, it's been printed and it has a few, few PowerPoint slides on it. It's only a paper. But this paper is what connects you with Allah. This paper is what connects you with Allah. This paper is what's teaching you how Allah wants to be known. This paper, it may only seem like a paper. So this paper is teaching you the seal of the Prophet You honor and respect the pen. You know this pen, you may think it's only a pen. Yeah, people flip pen in the air. People throw it on the floor. My teachers taught me, Noon wal qalami wa ma Allah takes an oath by the pen. It's only a pen. Allah takes an oath by it. Why does Allah take an oath? Yeah, because the qalam, the pen is the, the means of passing knowledge. And knowledge is the only path that you can take to get to know Allah and gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a student, you never throw pens around in the air. If you see a pen on the floor, you pick that pen up. Why? Because when you respect the tools that lead you towards the knowledge, you will start to respect the knowledge as well. And you will start to respect Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know these books, people misuse books. They start scribbling in it. Unnecessary writing, people are drawing. You see kids, even in the Qur'an's copy of the Qur'an, the mess they make in the Qur'an. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. You know our teachers taught us, don't even use it as you know, uh, um, as, a, as a safe deposit. Yeah, some people, you know, you, you go to their uh, house and you see that book and it's full of things. You'll see a ruler in it, you'll see pens in it, you'll see all the notes made in it, people have written their bank accounts on there, then, you know, friends, number, anything they needed that time, they're walking into the book straight away. Respect this book. Because this book is what's connecting you to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never see this book on the floor. In fact, there's a walkia, there's a story written here of Imam Sheikh Burhanuddin. And he saw a student of, of knowledge. He went to his house and he saw the, the book on the shelf and his ink pot on top of the book. And he said, you shall never gain knowledge because you've pressed your knowledge under the ink, onto, onto that pot. So you never put anything on top of the book. These are the adab taught to us and the way you, you the structure the format that you have the books in you always put the quran on top then the book of hadith underneath then the book of fiqh underneath and likewise the book of sirah that's the structure that you respect the books in but if that respect is not there you'll never succeed you'll never gain anything i like this there's a a, a poem and he says, "Ma wasala, woman wasala, illa bil hurmati. Woman sakata, woman sakata, illa bidar bil hurmati." He says, "Whatever knowledge you gain, whatever closeness you gain to Allah, you gain through respecting the tools of knowledge. Ma wasala, whatever you gain, woman wasala, whoever has gained, it's been through hurma, through respect and honor, honoring, respecting these books and these tools of knowledge." These ulama that will be teaching you this knowledge, you respect them. The ulama, the, the salaf went to the extent 
they will not only respect the teacher, they will respect the place he sat in. They respected his books. They respected his family. They would walk past his house with respect because that's the house of my Ustad. He told me knowledge. He told me who Allah is. He showed me the purpose of my creation and the reason for my existence. I would show him respect. These are all those, you know, the, the inner, the more batin, more of the uh, inner form of seeking knowledge. Don't always limit yourself to whatever has been taught in class. There's more to it. When you respect the, the teacher, the respect for the teacher given is that when the Ustad walks through the doors, the students stand up out of respect. That's how you respect knowledge. You don't sit in class until the Ustad sits down. You don't open your books until the Ustad has opened his book. And in modern context, if it's a PowerPoint, until the PowerPoint projecting projector is not on, or not being tuned on, you don't open your books. Not without the permission of the teacher. When the teacher speaks, you remain silent, you listen, you make notes. And there are adab of making notes. There's a lot that can be said. And the most, and then lastly I'll finish, because I was given 15 minutes, I'm on my 16th minute right now. I got respect time. Dua. Make dua for the teachers. You know, a lot of students, it's written in this book. A lot of students that were really, really intelligent, really sharp minded, and always around books, but they didn't succeed. In comparison to other students that maybe weren't mentally as sharp as others. They probably didn't know the answers to the majority of the questions that were asked in class, but they succeeded. The reason? Because they always make dua for the Ustah, for the teacher. It takes you a mile ahead of everyone by making dua for your teachers. How that affects you? You will experience it in your own life. But dua is a powerful tool. And making dua for the Ustad not only instills love in your heart for the Ustad, love for the knowledge that he's teaching you. He, like I said, is the means. He's connecting you. He's the bridge between you and Allah. He's connecting you to Allah. And if that individual who's connecting, who's bridging between the two, is not respected, that chain will never be connected. And without a connected chain, without a salat, you're nobody. And that's where I mean, all of these, these things lie around. I was told to speak about knowledge and its spiritual aspect. I tried, and whatever good I've said, what will feel Allah, of course, uh, Sayyid Tufal Rahman to come forward and say a few words before like, we go to the question of inshallah. Actually, I'm not accustomed to giving speech or standing up in a podium and giving lectures, so um, I apologize to my chefs uh, for my lack of knowledge. Um, I'm going to approach this short five minutes uh, just from a different perspective, with a philosophical uh, perspective, because I'm not, you know, my uh, Islamic knowledge is very uh, scattered. So, um, one question I'm going to ask you guys. What do you think is the purpose, our purpose of life on this earth? What is our purpose? Yes. By them. Just for afterlife. Anyone? Anyone? Come on. Bright students here, I'm sure you Listen to many lectures where the scholars say what is that purpose of our life. Anyone help me out? Most common, most common. 
answers we hear is to worship Allah. But do we ask why? Do we need to ask why? Why do we have to worship Allah? Because I'm sure there's Fuzul to help us out. Allah says, I don't need your ibadah. But why does he want us to do it, brother? No? You gotta help me out here. <coughs> like I said, to me, life is a bit philosophical, so this is life for me. This is life. This is um, a river, Burigan the river, one of the biggest rivers in Bangladesh. This is life. Each one of us are on the vessel. We are going to our destination from one to another. And we started our destination in Adam al Arwah, where we witness and we told Allah SWT, we believe in you. You are our Lord. But what happened after that when we come on this earth? We are on a journey. We are on a journey to where? Anyone? Jannah, inshallah. But ultimately, we are come to this dunya from Jannah and we're going to inshallah return to Jannah from Allah back again to Allah the creator of Allah SWT. and the reason I put this picture is if you can imagine this is life we're going from one bank from Jannah back again to another bank and this boat, the boats you see is our vessel, it's our body and the sailor you see or the boat captain you see is our nafs and the guide that the nafs uses is the Quran and Sunnah. And this is what we are. So we are set out on a sail. Allah Sunnah Ta'ala put us on this sail. We are trying to go to our destination. And our destination is Baqara. Inshallah, it's Jannah. Whoever succeeds in that journey, Allah Sunnah Ta'ala promises, Ya Yuhanda Ya who reaches the state of nafs of Tumma'inna, Allah Himself invites you to Jannah. Can you imagine that blessing? So, if you manage to successfully take that journey and come to the other side, you are invited by Allah Subhanahu wa Himself to Jannah. So, how do we become successful in this journey? And that's why we're here. So, Allah Subhanahu wa says, to you need to believe that there is hereafter. Is that uh, Surah Tiyama? If you read it, Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful. It, it defines the journey for you. It defines what the journey is about. So you need to believe in the Akhirah. You need to believe in your fight your final destination. There's no going away from that. You know, you, you can say you were out here on this earth and then we can say, yeah, life got to us and we forgot our destination. Allah gives you no excuse to say that. He said, I told you. I told you about the Akhirah. I told you about your final destination. I gave you the Quran. I gave you the Messiah. You cannot go under the bank and say, Allah, I, I forgot. Or I've lost my way. But Allah SWT gave you those guys. And that's the exact reason we're here. To know more about this guy. To know about more about this knowledge. To know, to know more about how to make that journey. And inshallah, in the end of the journey, we will reach Jannah. So thank you very much for everyone. Um, I hope I've not taken too much time. I'm just going to open the floor to uh, question and answer. Inshallah, if anyone got questions, please uh, come forward. Sisters, if you've got any questions, please write them down and pass them on. Inshallah, we'll try and answer them. <laughs> 22nd, inshallah. 29th, inshallah. 28th. No, we're on the <laughs> 29th of February, inshallah, the course will start. Um, and anyone want to join the course, I will hope everyone will join the course because we want to, inshallah, make the journey together and uh, gain that sacred knowledge to be able to attain them, uh, to attain the, uh, say, uh, say, uh, the, um, so we can stand in front of Allah SWT for one last time, inshallah. So, um, anyone who wants to join the course, uh, please, there's forms, inshallah, forms, forms going around. 
you can fold the phones in or there is a QR code, you can scan the QR code and uh, do online registration. So, so yeah, the procedure is very simple. Uh, pick up the brochure, the application form should be inshallah, inside, inshallah. Um, fill that in and the QR code is there. You just um, scan the QR code if you're not doing another paper. Um, there's also uh, the self is a very nominal fee. Um, if anyone wants to play in paying one installment, um, please do so. There's a little error on there. The two pages should be 120 times two. Oh, okay. It should be 60 times four. Okay, little error. Uh, you can either pay two installments or four installments. So two installments will be 120 pound. Times two. Times two. And. Uh, Four installments, 50, 50, 60 pounds, so there's some errors there, 60 pounds. Um, so they, they, these are the deadlines for each of the payments, inshallah. So, so if you pay in full, it's 200 pounds, okay, straight away. However, if you decide to pay in store, much which you understand, it's going to be a little bit more money. It says 110 on the screen, but it's actually going to be 120 pounds, so the full cost is going to be 240, whether you pay over two installments or four installments. So it just makes it easy for administrative purposes. A few people might ask, why is it more money? There's a lot of my administration that needs to be done if you're having to manage a little bit more money and the time constraints and things like that. So if you're paying full, it's 200 pounds. The other thing I'm gonna to add to it is, if you look at any of the courses across the board, whether it be a classroom course or an online course, the fees are considerably more. We're gonna be providing, obviously, all the handouts. There's gonna be a Google Drive with the information. There's gonna be a YouTube video, so even if you miss a class, you'll be able to go on to the YouTube and follow up on your classes. The other thing that we're saying, these are annual figures, so it's not like you miss a month, you don't pay. These are annual figures. Ideally, we want you to attend. We do understand that for any reason, you may not be able to attend. You, know, you may have a family wedding, you have other issues, lots of different things can happen. But it is an annual course. Ideally, we want everybody to do the year one and then do year two. So these are annual fees. So it's 200 pounds to pay up front, and then you've got your two installments. Post, uh, would love to do for two years, inshallah, and obviously it would be uh, going to be advanced level as well. Uh, if people are still of that offer, inshallah, so how much is it? Uh, uh, the big mention, inshallah. How do you pay it's cash? Money to make? Not even money in books, it's on the brochure as well. So, if you would like to buy it beforehand, you can buy, and, uh, buy it. I uh, also will, be, will not be giving the uh, books, however, I will be giving the handout every, every week, uh, whatever we learn, inshallah. So, I will not really recommend to get that for everyone to get the books, inshallah. Sorry, brother. As you can understand, these are very small fees, and therefore, there's no family discount or friends discount. So, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, I quite strongly believe everyone should be able to afford it, but if there's any issue, please uh, feel free to talk to us. Um, and inshallah, we, we'll see what we can do for you. Women's prayer, rules and systems, yes, of course, inshallah, it will come under the faith uh, course, which we will we'll be teaching both men and women's prayer system, inshallah. Uh, I think these are the questions. There, there's one question that came up on, on the uh, Google question. Is, uh, any facility for young ones. I'm afraid there isn't, but um, if you bring the young ones, they can uh, remain more or less quiet, then uh, inshallah, there's no problem. We see they can come. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, masjid is welcome place and they should uh, even make to feel welcome. But as you can see, inshallah, in future, as the classes go bigger um, and more mothers want to contribute uh, coming to the class, then we will look into the crash facility. But at the moment, there isn't such. There's room. Uh, if anyone wants to volunteer and looking after the kids, then uh, we can always allow the kids to play upstairs. So minimum age uh, is 14 for joining, but anyone else younger doing? I'd say if the children um, can come and learn, then that's absolutely fine as long as the children understand. For example, my son's 11 and he's going to come because he's quiet. He understands it. So as long as you, if, you know, if you've got any young children that think can benefit from it, can have the ability to sit down for two hours and carry on their concentration without getting incredibly bored, um, then yeah, bring the young children. Again, the fees apply, um, but you know, if you think they can benefit, then definitely bring them along. Is 
currently have a position. We have an opportunity for people who would like to seek for an ITCSE under Cambridge University. So inshallah we'll have the for, uh, facility uh, for them to seek on uh, the exam. And they will obviously uh, will get an extra qualification which will be beneficial for this life as well, for their education everything as a qualification. So it will be uh, uh, IGCS in Islamia. We think that you know, what we will be teaching here, we think that the course will be teaching that you know, uh, syllabus as well and there will be an uh, opportunity for people to sit on, to uh, uh, give an exam and uh, to get the qualification inshallah if anybody would like to. Yeah, the cover is optional. You don't, if you don't want to get that, it's fine. As long as you are learning inshallah, you are basic. Uh, we will do two modules at this time, inshallah, to make it easy on everyone. Uh, we don't want to spread it too much, so everyone can uh, prepare for any assessments and exam, inshallah. At the end of each class, there will be a question and answer session, so if you want to uh, ask any questions. Uh, we'll also have uh, resources available online um, on uh, Google Classroom, so any lecture notes, any videos that we make of the class and hopefully we shall have some uh, assignments to keep everyone engaged. Any other question? Uh, so if you're in Manchester then that's something is not within the course fee, that's something we'll have to find out how much they charge and uh, I'm sure it's not a big fee, it's not, it should, shouldn't be too much. So inshallah we'll, we'll find out. But let's get the course started inshallah and then um, we'll take it step at a time. Um, well, another thing I'm going to say is um, because we have a wide range of people joining us, don't be uh, thinking that you're not going to learn anything.